it's better. Let's start today with, is Germany stupid? So I don't know if you read the news, but you probably have. Uh, the Germany, I think it was yesterday, um, voted. They had a vote in parliament. Uh, they voted to shut down uh, the last nuclear reactor um, uh, they have. You know, uh, Russia is threatening to cut off their gas supply before the winter. Uh, it's actually uh, shut it, it, it's reduced supplies of gas right now because um, uh, for repairs. And they, what the Russians are really afraid of is that Germany will buy a bunch of natural gas during the summer, store it all up, and reduce the leverage that Russia has over Germany in the winter. So they've really, uh, you know, reduced the amount of natural gas they're providing Germany. So um, uh, Germany is facing a real energy crisis. Uh, we, know, uh, we know they just do not have. The, the, the capacity to produce electricity uh, for the country. They don't have the capacity to provide heating for their population if the Russians shut it off, uh, shut off the natural gas or reduce the natural gas significantly. Uh, they're facing a real energy crisis. And in the face of the energy crisis, in the name of climate change, in the name of being the poster child for responsible climate change, and, and, and most importantly, with greater support Greta really got excited about this. They decided to shut down their last nuclear power plant. There you go, Greta. Greta got her way, and as a consequence of shutting down uh, the last nuclear power, which now, by this point, only accounts for 6% of their electricity, but in order to make up for that 6%, what are they going to have to do? Where are they going to get that 6% back in the midst of an energy crisis? Not burning natural gas. No, because that'll make them even more dependent on Russia. So if natural gas is less available, if renewables are unreliable, and if they don't want nuclear, let's see, what's left? What's left? Well, it turns out that what's left is the dirtiest, the most polluting, and the one that produces the most CO2 of all, which is coal. So um, they are going to ramp up coal-fired power production. Now, the Poles are really excited about this. The Poles love this because uh, they sell the coal to Germany. And uh, Polish coal miners are very happy to hear that their jobs are secure because of German Stupidity. That's not even stupidity. This is the morality of altruism. This is the morality of sacrifice. This is so we'll be uncomfortable. So we'll pay more costs. So uh, we'll give more power to our enemies. So we'll turn the other cheek. But we'll do the right thing. And the right thing is to sacrifice for what? For unclear, for the planet for temperatures, and of course, the nuclear power plant is zero carbon. The nuclear power plant, again, is zero carbon. Coal is not zero carbon. So all in the name of climate change and yet increasing the carbon footprint because, because nuclear is dangerous, Nuclear is um, offensive. Well, it's offensive to Greta. So Greta came out today and let the world know that she uh, supports going off of nuclear, that she thinks nuclear, in a sense, is the worst of all worlds. Um, and um, that is, uh, th th you know, so I don't know where, how much she hates nuclear, how does that compare to um, how much she's afraid of climate change. I guess, uh, I guess she hates nuclear more. But here's, here's what's really going on. And this is what makes us not evil, not, sorry, not stupid, not suicidal, but just sheer evil. This is what some guy named Zach Cantor wrote. Zach Cantor is, who's Zach Cantor? Let's take a look at Zach Cantor. Zach is the founder CEO of something. 
something, uh, something, something, all around nude. I have no idea who Zach Cantor is. Unimportant. He says about the German decision, right, and about, you know, so Greta wrote an op-ed. Uh, Greta wrote an op-ed. Um, uh, After all, the climate crisis is not about the environment, she writes. It's a crisis of human rights. This is where they reveal themselves. It's a crisis of human rights, of justice and of political will. Colonial, racist, and patriarchal systems of oppression have created and fueled it. We need to dismantle them all. This is not about climate change. This is not about the, quote, environment, whatever the hell that means. This is not about spotted owls. This is not about the danger of nuclear power. This is not about anything even remotely benevolent. This is unequivocally, clearly, just a hatred of capitalism, a hatred of the system that we have, a hatred of the West, a hatred of values, a hatred of freedom. So I don't know, there's some kind of echo. Uh, the echo is not being produced by my uh, audio setup. It, the echo is a consequence of something on the internet. So hopefully it'll go away. Let me know if you get, the reverb is, is a bandwidth re reverb. It's something to do with, it's gone now. So it, it's just a glitch in the, in the ethernet out there. What they really hate is man. What they hate, really hate is progress. What they really hate is capitalism. So again, let me read you what Greta Thunberg, with a couple of co-authors who are not worth mentioning, uh, wrote about, sh about uh, shutting off the nuclear power plant. Um, after all, the climate crisis is not just about the environment. It's not at all about the environment. They couldn't care less about the environment. It is a crisis of human rights of justice and a political will. Okay, that, okay. I mean, I'm for human rights, justice, and I guess it is, all these issues are issues of political will, but then you get what they're really after. Colonialism, racism, and patriarchal systems of oppression have created and fueled it, we need to dismantle them. Now, we don't have colonialism anymore. Racism, is way down over the last 150 years, way down in the West over the last 150 years. And the patriotic system is being dismantled. I mean, women have equal rights and, and whatever's left of glass ceilings is being shattered. And uh, yes, there's some still racists out there. Yes, there's still some male chauvinists out there. Yes, but there's no colonials out there except for Putin. So what is she riling about? Well, she's riling about what all of those represent in her deranged mind. She's riling about capitalism. And Zach Cantor, again, not sure who he is, he says, I'm surprised people are, uh, I'm surprised people are surprised by this. This is Greta's position. The big problem Green Party see with nuclear power is that it doesn't dismantle systems of oppression. It only produces clean energy. Whoa, what? The problem with nuclear power is that it only produces clean energy. It doesn't dismantle systems of oppression. They see the existential risk of nuclear power solving climate change without upending Capitalism. This is uh, Zach Cantor. Greta said the previous thing. This is Zach Cantor. They see the existential risk of nuclear power solving climate change without upending capitalism. So if we solve climate change, if we solve climate change, but we don't upend capitalism, we haven't done anything. 
I, you remember there used to be this joke environmentalists uh, like watermelon, green on the outside, red on the inside. And there's no question that what happened in the 1960s, and this has nothing to do with wokeism because this is as old as the 1960s. What happened in the 1960s is the anti-capitalist agenda shifted from socialism, an economic system was clearly failing and, and, and clearly uh, destructive. The anti-capitalist sh shifted from an advocacy of socialism from an advocacy even of the welfare state to an advocacy for environmentalism. But what's at the heart of it, what's at the background of it, what's behind it all is a hatred of capitalism. Capitalism is what all of them want to dismantle. Capitalism is what all of them hate. Why? is nuclear energy pro-capitalist, but solar energy and wind are not. Because look, nuclear energy has been subsidized uh, by government as is, nuclear, as is uh, solar and wind. So what makes wind and solar anti-capitalist? Why is solar and wind dismantling the system of oppression? How is solar and wind going to solve the crisis of human rights, of justice, and political will? How is solar and wind going to help dismantle the system of colonial, racist, and patriotic and patriarchy? What is it about solar and wind that is anti-capitalist? That fits into their fits into their mold? That suits the haters of capitalism so much. Yeah, Jennifer's got it right. It's the fact that they don't work. It's the fact that they're unreliable. It's the fact that capitalism is not sustainable. Well, not capitalism. That our economy is not sustainable with them. Nobody owns the sun, nobody owns the wind. But somebody owns the solar panel, somebody owns the windmill, nobody owns the oil in the ground way deep under. It's only owned by somebody once it's extracted. So <sighs> what they really want is the destruction of our prosperity. What they really want is the destruction of capitalism, destruction of wealth, the destruction of life, the destruction of freedom. Solar and wind facilitate that because what drives our standard of living, what drives our quality of life is energy. What they want is energy that doesn't work. Explicitly, this is what they want. They're saying it right here. They are not interested in the existential benefit of nuclear power to solve climate change. What they want is to upend capitalism. And to do that, they know they need to destroy nuclear. They need to destroy fossil fuels so what they can have are unreliables. What they want is to return us to the caves. What they want is to destroy civilization. I mean, these people are about as evil as it gets because they're motivated by hatred. They couch it all in order to gain public acceptance. They couch it all in terms of the environment, climate change, storms, hurricanes, but what they really want is just for you to stop living, stop producing, stop benefiting from the abundance that markets have created for you, the abundance that fossil fuel has created and that nuclear has the potential to create. And 
you know, this is the ideology that is driving much of Europe. This is the ideology that drove the vote yesterday to close down the last nuclear power plant in Germany, in spite of the fact that this will lead to increased CO2 emissions through coal, because they know that coal is not sustainable in the long run, that they will build more, new, they will build more uh, wind and solar, and that that is the end of wealth and prosperity in Western Europe. Note, <laughs> funnily enough, that of all countries, France is still hanging on to its nuclear power plants. It produces so much energy from nuclear power plants, it's actually exporting uh, power to Great Britain. It'll be interesting if the day comes where the French are actually bailing out the Germans by exporting power to Germany from their nuclear power plants. That'll be quite an irony and that would be quite a day uh, when, uh, when that actually happens. So uh, maybe, maybe one day. Anyway, uh, truly scary stuff. Truly scary stuff. This isn't even, you know, the Paris Accords. The Paris Accords are kind of mealy mouth, nothing. This is Germany leading the pack. This is Germany not even following the Paris Accord because actually this decision by Germany will increase their CO2 emissions, won't decrease them. So, uh, <laughs> truly amazing, suicidal, scary, but civilization hating. If, if uh, the tweet that I was reading to you before in the article from Greta, uh, I retweeted it. So if you go to my Twitter stream, you can find it there. Uh, it's it, it, it truly unbe unbelievable the, the, the extent to which people are willing to go in the name of hatred and in the name of their egalitarianism, because ultimately what their egalitarianism is leading them is to advocate, is to advocate for poverty, for the end of capitalism, the end of the modern world, because what do we know about the modern world? It's not egalitarian. We're not equal. We're only equal when we're poor. We're only equal when we're starving. Even then, we're not really equal. But that's the only time they can perceive equality. They long for the Middle Ages. They long for the Dark Ages, particularly in Germany. Germany has a long tradition of conservatives who, who resented capitalism in the 19th century, who, who resented the, 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 the move that capitalism uh, uh, you know, inspired to the cities, away from the little villages, and towards a secular life away from religion. And uh, there's been a strong movement against capitalism, against progress, against uh, both social progress and uh, economic progress, and towards kind of a, a, a unification with nature, a return to nature, which means a return to poverty. Uh, but that's where we're all more equal, and that's where you can better control, and that you can both better control people um, and you can, um, yeah, I mean, people, people uh, when they're poor, are less inclined to be individualist, they're, 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 particularly when there's no opportunity to rise. And that's at the end of the day. Think environmentalist, think Greta, think the destruction of the world. That's the aim, that's their motivation, that's their drive. That's where this is heading. Thank you for listening or watching the Iran Brooks Show. If you'd like to support the show, we make it as easy as possible for you to trade with me. You get value from listening. You get value from watching. Show your appreciation. You can do that by going to iranbrookshow.com slash support, by going to Patreon, Subscribestar, Locals, and just making an appropriate contribution uh, on any one, of those, uh, any one of those channels. Also, if you'd like to see the Iran Brooks Show grow, please consider sharing our content, and of course, subscribe. Press that little bell button right down there on YouTube so that you get an announcement when we go live. And for you, those of you who are already subscribers and those of you who are already supporters of the show, thank you. I very much appreciate it.